Um, kiddos, we have some friends here today, and they want to see how we learn some new concepts here at Lakewood Elementary. So you've been chosen to help with that. So that's a really big deal. So I'll be teaching a new concept today. So look for the components, teachers, of um, the types of things that you would have whenever you teach a new concept to students. And we'll get started. All right. So raise your hand if you want to be a better speller. Do you want to learn how to spell a little bit better? I think we all could improve our spelling. Well, today our learning target is that we'll be able to use the 111 rule to spell words. And in order to use the 111 rule, we started with some new sounds with our cards. So I'm going to show you, we, we worked on these on Tuesday. And um, if you could get out your phoning graphing charts really quickly, I think they're on your desks already. Let's look at your chart with all the colors on it. And who can tell me, what does the yellow represent? All that yellow on your chart. Peyton, what's the yellow for? Um, it's for how you know what your sounds are. Very good explanation. It's how we know what sounds we've already learned, right? Good job. And we keep track of that with a, with a yellow highlighter. And I told you on Tuesday, by the end of the week, we would be able to fill in four more sounds, which is really exciting. Because the phoning graphing chart shows us the sounds and the letters that represent those sounds. And there are a lot of sounds there and a lot of different letter combinations that we're working on. Now, if you look at your chart, everybody has a lot of yellow, but then there's a lot of white. What's the white tell us? Jalea. That the things we haven't learned yet, right. The places that we're going to go. So it's really exciting to look at that and see all the things we've learned and then all the places we need to go for the rest of first grade. All right, and we'll get those out at the end and you'll get to use your highlighters as we work on this sound. So I'm gonna show you the cards and you give me the sound. Remember we introduced these on Tuesday Give me the sound, ready? Good job. And we know from our blending board that there are other letters that make these four sounds, right? So let's open up our sand tray and we are going to practice writing the letters for the sounds that we're working on. If you need help opening your sand, let me know. Some of these are really tight. Need some help. Everybody got them? All right. So remember whenever we have um, a sound that is shown by more than one letter, we draw a line in the sand with our finger so that we can have two sections, okay? So go ahead and draw a line down the middle. Make sure you draw a line down the middle because you're gonna put a sound, a letter representation, representation for each sound. There you go, you got it. Because we wanna keep those separate, okay. Eyes on me, the sound is oh, repeat, oh. oh. Let's write it, so L, I should hear your voices. L says oh, and L says oh, and LL says oh, okay. And remember that we underline from left to right because we read and write from left to right. So we want to practice that every chance we get. All right. You can give your sand tray a little shake and a race. 
as on me. The sound is s. Repeat. S. Let's write the sound, the letters that represent the sounds. Ready? S says s. And s says s. Oh, I like how Presley remembered to draw the line and keep them separated. So did Jalea. But you've got your S's backwards, so let's turn those around. They face the other way, okay? Practice that. Good job. You got it. Good, good. All right. Good job, Dylan. You may erase. Now, it is so important that we use the sand because if you can hear things and see things and feel things, that's using your senses to learn. And that just helps us to remember better, okay? So when you get a chance to use your senses, just use as many of them as you can, and that will help you be a better reader. All right, eyes on me. The sound is z. Repeat, z. Let's write it. Let me hear your voices. Z says z. And z, z says z. Z. Let's make sure they're going the right direction. You need to turn yours around, babe. There's. Good. Good job. Very neat. Good. Did you get it? All right. Okay, go ahead and erase that. Now this last one, we know this sound has three different letter combinations. So you wanna make a cross in your sand so that you have a space to write something here, here, and here, all right? So go ahead and make your cross in your sand so that you have a section for each sound. Eyes on me. The sound is repeat. Let's write it. F says and and you remember? And how do we identify pH? Naomi. We use a swivel line because it is a? Great, good job. These all make the same sound. Good. Now, go ahead and close your sandbox. And let's think about what we just talked about. If we have so many letters that can make the same exact sound, how do we know then, when we go to write a sentence, how do we know which one of these patterns to use? How do we spell things? Let's think about our blending board really quickly, okay? So like if I said, I want to spell the word toss, toss. Think about those sounds. We do this every day with the spelling, with the um, blending board, whenever we blend sounds together. Um, Kimberly, help me out. If I wanted to spell the word toss, what would I begin with? Let's listen, t -t toss, t letter T. And then what do you think would come next? What would my vowel be, Jonathan? O. O. Toss. What sound do you hear at the end? Mm. Presley. S. S. All right. So, t toss. Toss. You know what? We can switch this around and we'll have it on my blender board too. You can see it nice and big. Toss, toss. 
those sounds are there, right? But today our learning target is to learn to use the one, one, one rule to become a better speller. And so here's where we know which pattern we need to use, okay? If the word or the syllable has one syllable, whenever we pound it, we pound once. If it has one short vowel sound, let's go over our short vowel sounds real quickly. Now those are the ones where we have hand signals, so show me your hand signals. Let's review them, make sure we've got them already. Ah, uh, 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 eh, uh, ah, uh, uh, and eh. Uh. All right, so if it has one syllable when we pound it, one short vowel sound, and if it ends, here's the key here, if it ends in S, L, F, or Z sound, then we double the final consonant. We use these. We give that last letter a twin that looks just like the other one, okay? It's called the one, one, one rule because it has one syllable, one short vowel sound, and one of these special letters at the end. Now, a way to help remember this is by having a little sentence, because sometimes we might say, well, gee whiz, okay, I remember that it has one syllable. Miss Elon said it has to have one short vowel sound, but what were those special letters? So this is gonna help you. It says, Sammy loves friendly zebras. Now, who doesn't love a friendly zebra, <laughs> right? So we're going to use this if you have a hard time remembering which letters. Just think of this sentence, Sammy loves friendly zebras. And we're going to hang this in the classroom, okay, so that you'll be able to look at that in the future. All right, so let's practice this. Let's go back to toss. And I want you to get out your hand that we traced at the beginning of the school year. And I'm going to let you help me pound this out. You all were so kind to help me spell toss a second ago. And here's what we came up with. Now remember, whenever we pound our syllables, you're going to use the hand that you don't write with, okay? You're going to use the hand that you traced. All right. So go ahead and put your fist in the middle of the hand on your, on your table. Make a fist. Make a fist. There you go. All right. So let's pound this out and see what we come up with. All right, everybody. Eyes on me. The syllable is toss. Repeat. Toss. Let's tap it. T -a -s. Toss. Okay, did it have one syllable? Thumbs up if it does. Yeah, we only pounded one time. Did it have a short vowel sound? Think about when you tap those sounds. T ah, ah. Is there a hand signal for that? So it's a short vowel sound, isn't it? And does it end in one of these special letters? S, L, F, or Z? Thumbs up if you say yes. It does. So what do we do, Naomi? What do we need to do to this? We need to add another S. We add another S because our learning target is that we can use the 111 rule to spell words, and that followed the 111 rule, didn't it? Good job. Will you help me do another? All right, let's see here. Um, the syllable is cuff, repeat. Cuff. Let's tap it. Cuff. Cuff. Does it follow the one, one, one rule? What's the first thing we're looking for? Does it have what, Jonathan? 
Well, does it have a short vowel sound? Okay, cuff, does it have a short vowel sound? Short U, right, good. So he said it has one short vowel sound. What's the first thing we're looking for when we do this? One what? Syllable. One syllable. So does cuff, Whitley, does cuff have one syllable? It does, doesn't it? Okay, so we've had step one, one syllable. Step two, one short vowel sound. Now we have to test to see if it ends in one of these. S, L, F, or Z. Sammy loves friendly zebras. That's how we remember that. Does it end in one of those letters? It does. So Dylan, what do we need to do? Add um, a double F. All right, add a double F. And you know what, the word cuff, we know to use the letter C, this is a lesson from long ago, but how did I know to use a C and not a K? You remember? Jonathan? Remember that little poem? C goes... K. I think we have Miss Singer. Can you remind them? There you go. So it's over here at the cat. C goes with A-O-M-U. K goes with the other two. There you go. It's been a while since we've done that, but that helps us remember how we begin a word that has the K sound. Good job. All right, let's try another one. Um, eyes on me. The syllable is fizz. Repeat, fizz. Let's test the one, one, one rule to see how we would spell fizz. All right, let's tap it out. Is fizz. Does it have one syllable? Thumbs up if it does. What about the vowel sound? What are we looking for? Because every syllable has a vowel sound, but we're looking for a specific type of vowel sound. We're looking for what, Naomi? The I. The I, right? The short vowel sound, good. And remember, if you get confused with that, just think about those hand signals we do every single time we're together, okay? I, I, it has a short vowel sound. Does it end in one of these, S, L, F, or Z? Fizz. What sound do you hear at the end, Presley? Fizz. Z. Z, good job. So how would we spell this? Who wants to help me spell it out? Julia. F-I-Z. Okay, good job. All right. Let's do another. Eyes on me. The syllable is pan. Repeat. Pan. Let's tap it. And pan. Okay. How would we spell pan? Using the one, one, one rule. What do you think, Jonathan? Um, P. Okay. A. A. P A N. Huh, P-A-N. So does it have one syllable? Let's pound it. Pan. Pan. Does. Does it have a short vowel sound? Yes. Okay, so we have to decide whether we're going to double that final consonant. Does it end in an S, L, F, or Z? No. No, so do we double the final consonant? No, no. good job. That one, one, one rule is really useful to learn how to spell, isn't it? Now, what if I said to you, okay, you ready for this? What if I said, I don't have one pan, I have two pans. Now what? Is it one syllable? Pans? Still is one syllable. Still has a short A sound. Does it end in an S, L, F, or Z? It does. What do I need to do, though? What do you think? Whitley. Just use one S. Just use one S, yeah. We don't see words that look like this, do we? No, 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 no. <laughs> the deal with that is 
it doesn't count if you're making a word plural. If you're making it more than one, to represent more than one, then you don't add an extra S to the end of something that already has two consonants side by side, okay? That's just something that you have to memorize. There are also, because you know as well as I do, the English language is full of rule breakers. So let me fill you in on a few rule breakers, okay? If it's a word that ends with an S but has a Z sound, like was or is, it doesn't follow the 111 rule. I don't know why, it's just a rule breaker. Those are words we have to just memorize, okay? And then there are words that don't follow the rules at all, like bus and yes. You just have to memorize them. They don't follow the 111 rule. But for the most part, you can apply the 111 rule to help you spell words. All right, so let's practice this. Let's practice this. I have, oh, here it is. A friendly zebra for every one of you. <laughs> and this is gonna help you remember. When you get your paper, go ahead and write your name on it. It has a place for the date to, do you have the date up? It's okay if you don't. Oh, the blender, I knew you had it somewhere. There we go. Go ahead and write your name. I love how Peyton's already writing her name on her paper and Kimberly's working hard on that too. It's January 22nd. How's this work? There we go. Okay. So if you look at your practice sheet where you get to show me that you know the 111 rule, we have Sammy loves friendly zebras over here as a reminder and a picture of a smiling zebra just to kind of trigger your thoughts to help you remember this, this rule. So if I give you a syllable, I want you to think, okay, does it have one syllable? And you're going to write a check mark if it does. And if it does not, then you'll write a minus, okay? That's going to tell me that you know if it has one syllable or not. Now, what tool do you have at your desk to help you pound the syllable? Hold it up. Yeah, there it is. We use these all the time. So, you can pound the syllable when I say it. And then, after you decide if it has one syllable or not, you're going to look and answer, does it have a short vowel sound? So the way that you do that, just like we've practiced, you're gonna tap the sounds, and if the vowel sound is short, if it has a hand signal that goes with it, you're gonna make a what? Check mark. And if it doesn't, if it has a long vowel sound or something different, you're gonna make a? A minus, yeah. And then, the last thing you're gonna look for or listen for is does it have a special letter at the end? Does it have an S, L, F, or Z? If it does, what are you gonna write in that box? Check. Check mark. If it does not, what are you gonna write? Minus. Minus. If you have three check marks in a row, you'll be able to spell the word using a double consonant at the end because you've learned the 111 rule. If you have a minus in any of these, is it gonna have a twin on the end? No, no. So it'll just be like a regular word on our blending board, okay? Let's practice this together. So the syllable is hill. Repeat, hill. All right, hill. Does it have one syllable? Hill. 
I see thumbs up. Yep, it has one syllable. What are we going to write in this box? Check mark. Does it have a short vowel sound? Let's see the hand signal for the vowel sound in heel. Dylan's got it. Jalea's got it. Eh, eh, eh. Does it have a short vowel sound? Yes. Uh, yes, it does. What are we going to put in the box? A check mark. Good. And does hill, do you hear an S, L, F, or Z sound at the end? Look at those thumbs popping up. All right. So what are we going to do for this box? A check mark. A check mark. Okay. Now let's look across there. Do we have three check marks in a row? Well, I'd like for you to spell the word hill over there where it says spell the word. Ill, hill. Make sure it comes up a little bit higher. Bell sound you got, Kimberly. Eh, eh. Good. And what sound you hear at the end? Oh. And how many do we get? We double it if it ends with the L, right? Good job. Good job. Do we need that one special letter, S, L, F, or Z? Because it ended in L. So what do we do? Good. All right. Who can spell hill for me? Let's all spell it together. Ready? H, I, L, L. And who can explain how you know to spell it? that way and not just H-I-L. Oh, let's see here. Peyton. Um, because it has three check marks. It has three check marks. So it follows all the components of what rule? The one, 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 one. The one, one, one rule. Very good. So let me give you a few more words to practice and you're going to do these on your own, okay? You are going to listen. And let me get my words ready. All right. Eyes on me. The syllable is fuss. 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 Don't fuss. It's just a little practice worksheet. <laughs> fuss. Oh, I love how Jalea's already pounding it out. She's using her tools that we use. Good. Fuss. And go ahead and fill in the chart. If it has one syllable, one short vowel, and one special letter. And then see if you can spell it. Fuss. Now let's use your hand to figure this out. What's my syllable? Fuss. Pound it out. Is that one syllable? Okay. What do you need to do right here? Yep. Does it have a short vowel sound? Okay. Well, tap out the sounds. Fuss. What short vowel do you hear in the middle? Yeah, show me the hand signal. So is that short? 
does it and and S L Z F R Z S. Mm hmm So how would you send that out to spell it? Yeah, go ahead, do your check mark. You got it. Uh -huh. You're going to write it over here. How would you spell that? Good. You got it. Good job. All right. Let's look at another one. Short U, right? And an S at the end. Okay. Eyes on me. The syllable is met. Repeat. Met. I am happy to have met you. Met. Go ahead and figure it out using the one, one, one rule. Good job, Lulu. Now if it ends in one of those, what do you do to the end? There you go. Now the next one is met. Can you pound it out for me? Good. One syllable. Yes or no? One short vowel. Are you doing it, Dylan? Does, it, does met have one syllable? Okay. Yeah. Good. And does it end with S, L, F, or Z? Listen to the sound. Met. Good. So can you spell it over there? You got your chart filled in. Good job. Okay, listen to the last sound. Met. Met. Not miss. Met. All right, good. So how would you spell met then? You got your chart filled out. Let's see if you can spell met. You got it, just write it down. Okay, short vowel. Met. Met. Does it have a short vowel in the middle? Yep. And you got that right. It does it end in that. So how would we sound that out to spell it? March. Mm-hmm. What's it begin with? Mm. Uh. Wait a second. Do your hand signal. That says ah, ah. We want this one. Eh. Uh. Which one is that? There you go. Those hand signals are handy, aren't they? They help me all the time. And then met. Good. All right. And our last one we're going to do is eyes on me. The syllable is jazz. Repeat. Jazz. All right, see if you can spell it. Jazz. Does that follow the one, one, one rule? Doing good. Jazz. Is one of those? Yep. Very good. One, one, one roll. Does it follow it? Did you pound it out? Jazz. Okay, is that one syllable? Short vowel. You got it. Why are you changing it, Julia? Let's look at those 
No, you had them going the right way. That's right. You got it. How about it, Naomi? Good work. All right. Just turn your, your Z's around, okay? You've got them going the opposite direction. See that? Just turn them around. But you spelled it correctly. Good job. Good job, Lily. All right. So do you feel like we've achieved our learning target that we can apply the 111 rule to be a better speller, to spell words? Thumbs up if you feel like you have a good handle on this. It looks like you do. All right. So, the last part of this, I promised you on Tuesday that if we were able to work on this sound and then learn the 111 rule, we'd be ready to fill out four more places on your phoneme graphing chart. So, I'm going to give you a little bag, and when you get it, you can take out the popsicle sticks. And they have some familiar letters on them. What do you all see? What do you see there, Jonathan? That um, they all um, have the, um, any letters that you get. Okay. Good. He said, hey, that's all those double letters we were working on today. So let's go ahead and lay those on your desk. It doesn't matter what order you put them in. Although, if you wanted to line them up like Sammy, what? Sammy what, everybody? Love. Loves what? Friendly. Friendly. Zebras. If you put them in that order, that just helps us to remember one more way to see them in that order. Um, Sammy loves friendly zebras. Lay those out. And do you have your highlighters? Yes, they're in our supply. Okay, grab your highlighter and have your phoneme graphing chart handy too, okay? So you need these cards, your phoneme graphing chart, and your highlighter because we're going to show some progress here. You're going to get to fill this with some more color. All right, let's see. Presley, you need a highlighter? You got it? Okay. So here's your job, okay? You all are such good listeners. You are going to listen for the sound at the end of the word I say. When you hear it, you're going to choose one of these to hold up to show me, okay? If you hear the, what sound does this make? What sound does this make? What sound does this one make? And last but not least, okay, you're listening for these sounds. Whenever I say a word, listen for the sound at the end of the word, hold up the appropriate card that goes with the sound. And when I give you the okay, when I see that you know it, you can take your highlighter and I'll show you, or Miss Singer will show you, because she has it pulled up there, which, uh, which number to go to, and you can highlight that pattern. Sound like fun? We want to fill this up with all kinds of color before the end of the year. All right, so um, listen up. The first one is buzz. Buzz. Show me the card. Jonathan's got it. Good, good, good. Buzz. Show me the card that goes with buzz and hold it up. Good job, Kimberly. Buzz. Good job, Dylan. All right. Julia, I didn't see you hold up your card, sweetheart. Did you hold up the card that goes with Buzz? There you go. Don't highlight till everybody shows me their card. Good job. Looks like everybody has that one. So you can mark off on number 20 where you see the ZZ pattern next to where you've done Z. It's in the first column all the way to the bottom. You may highlight ZZ, because you know that one now. Right there.
wherever I find it. All right. Your next word is spell. Bye. Spell. Show me the card. Spell. You're listening for the ending sound. The sound at the end. Spell. The sound at the end of spell. Good job. All right. I should see a lot of this. L L spell spell. So that is number eight. Okay. L says spell, so you wait on that. Dylan, you can go ahead and highlight your LL. Did you find it? Good. All right. Listen for your next pattern. The syllable is off. 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 What sound do you hear at the end of off? Good job. I think we all have that one. And remember, FF says and so does F and PH. When you look across that line, um, we're on number four. You have already highlighted the F and the PH. The FF is in the middle. Go ahead and highlight that. You can highlight that. Good. Forget it, Peyton. Right there. All right. Okay, and our last one. What sound do you hear at the end of mess? Mess. Mess. Good. See a lot of SS's in the air. So go ahead and let's see, S is number 14 right there ss ss right there get it good job okay all right So that concludes our lesson on the 111 rule today. I feel like you have a really good handle on it and that by being able to apply the 111 rule, we'll all be better spellers. All right, good job, everybody. You may put your supplies back in your baggie.